Hey, so I've got Guerlain's Santal Paurosa here from the L'Art et la Matier collection, which is the newest release. And it seems to have caused quite a bit of stir. Uh, a lot of changes have came with this release, as you'll notice the new packaging, uh, just the rebranding of the whole line. Some perfumes have changed names, some have been discontinued. Uh, there's been some additions to this, so uh, it's come a long way since the original uh, release of this line, which is about 2005 with Bois d'Armenie, Anique Minardo, Rose, Rose Barbara was Francis Kurgdian, and Queer Beluga was uh, Olivier Polge. So roughly about the same time as the Dior Privés came out, that's when these were launched, and they came in these... Um, you know, beautiful but unconventional bottles, which I found a little bit uh, not very functional, uh, especially, you know, with the twist top, we had leaking problems, we had evaporation problems, and then with the bulb sprayers, which were complete atrocity. It wasn't until the last version where I think they really perfected it, but somewhere along the line, they decided to completely do an overhaul and I like these bottles I think they're really nice they're they're classy looking um, yeah I get the comparisons to the Givenchy line but this is actually a nod to Guerlain's uh, classic bottle they used over a hundred years ago so um, I don't really care much for the the custom caps when you come in they'll create you a custom cap with any color you want threading or or, or you know they've got different uh, versions of, of uh, the top there it's, it's all nice and dandy, but it's not a selling point for me. Um, it is more marketing. However, let's get into the marketing of where Guerlain is going with this because I think they are putting a lot of effort and, and time and money into the marketing of this whole line because when you go into the, the boutique where these are carried, Holt Renfrew here specifically in Canada, They've made this huge effort and a huge display for the Arts and Materials line where the classics and the timeless pieces are really hidden. They're out of sight uh, and you really have to look around to find them. So there's, you know, there's no Chalimar, Vol de Nuit, Jiki, Mitsuko, Abirouge, Heritage. All the good stuff is like, it's probably, it looks like it's in shoe boxes under the counter or in drawers and... When, when you come to the Arts and Materials collection, they've got them, they've got this gorgeous display and they've got these floodlights just shining down on them on these you know beautiful colors of perfume. They've got blotters with all their own names on them. I've never seen a blotter with Shalimar or Mitsuko written on it, but you've got blotters with Santal Royale or not San, Santal Paurosa and, and Wad Armani and, and, and Tonka Imperial and all that. So they've really gone to great distances to push these perfumes. I guess they need to sell because they've jacked the price up as well. But <sighs> yeah, let's get into the, the fragrance itself. Santal Paurosa is all about sandalwood and uh, it is the new Australian sandalwood. And I've heard, and I've also made the comparisons myself to both Santal Royale and, okay, Santal Royale. So you probably will or will not make a direct comparison to this. Um, and I've also heard people say it reminded them of Suntal 33. I myself would agree, and also maybe a little of this uh, Louis Vuitton's Eau Hassard. And they don't, it doesn't smell exactly or identical to any of these. However, there is a reference to them, and that being they're all using Australian sandalwood since Indian Mysore sandalwood is extinct and um, might take generations before it's uh, available to come back. At least, you know, it's starting to come back, but it's not sustainable enough for perfumers to actually spend time and dedicate uh, that, that style of sandalwood to a uh, single perfume. So they've gone to Australian sandalwood. So of course, it's going to remind you of something that has the same uh, species of sandalwood in it. Uh, 
this Australian sandalwood is much different than the uh, uh, sandalwood that I am familiar with. And, and a lot of that seems to have changed about 15 years, 15, 20 years ago, uh, where they started using this stuff and, and the sandalwood became much drier and ashier. Whereas before, if you are familiar with a quality sandalwood, this being one of the best, Guerlain Samsara, one of my favorite iterations of sandalwood comes in number five, actually, and, and number five's family members, 22 and Bois de Zille. But um, their sandalwood was much creamier, milkier. Uh, it was fruitier. It had uh, natural fruit tones to it. I got coconut uh, nuances to it. Um, it was just really rich and deep. And now that they're using this this different breed of sandalwood which is also it's 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 a quality sandalwood and it's quite pricey at $2500 a kilogram one of the most costliest natural raw materials it's different it's different than what we are known to uh be familiar with so it is drier ashier uh it's it's it actually feels more woody like uh sawdusty and of course you know the perfumer uses it in um in dosages dosages with synthetics to build the accord that they want you to perceive so any kind of creaminess here is coming uh from outside of the sandalwood so they've added a fig here i don't necessarily perceive a fig there's something green slightly fruity but i don't see you know the fig that's noticeable in part, uh, patchouli ardent is it patchouli ardent the last absolute like that was overdosed in fig and probably a little bit unbalanced but uh, i don't necessarily get the the fig in here i do get the rose and oud combination slightly um especially early on and i wasn't even aware they were uh marketing this as a rose and oud until you know i sensed it myself i was like oh this feels like a smoky um almost like a French style. Like they've taken Santal Royale and, and fine French it. They've taken out all the harsh elements. Um, Santal Royale is really abrasive and it's a loud projector and it gets dirty, not dirty, it gets animalic and musky and you don't have any of that here. So that's that's probably the, the, the connection to Santal Royale is that rose oud and the sandalwood. It's, it's really the drier facets of sandalwood. But here the rose oud doesn't last very long. It's, it's most noticeable in the, mo in, in the morning, uh, early on in, in the start of the fragrance. And then it, and it is a little bit, you know, at first it was a little bit abrasive and a little bit too dry and woody for my taste. Um, but since, you know, since I've gotten this, this bottle, I've put some air in the bottle. It's, it's had time to open up the perfume has it's bloomed where um a lot of that has smoothed over now and, and, and the perfume is much more soft it's warmer and creamier before opposed it was it was really dry and harsh um so it had harsh facets inside of a very smooth perfume this this perfume is really smooth and really well crafted they've taken their time with this uh Smooth in the sense, you know, it wears smooth. It's not loud, but it has a beautiful trail and, and, and a great silage. So I'll notice it in my trail more than I will projecting off of my skin. It's a very soft and subtle perfume, and I like it for that. Um, the perfume is very woody. It focuses on a, a lot of wood tones, so it's pretty much all woods. It is, it is dry. It is slightly smoky. It is slightly ashy. It is slightly incensey. When I say slightly, it's all very finely nuanced. Um, nothing really sticks out besides this really nice silage. So you get creamy facets. It's warm. Uh, one of my favorite aspects to this is they've added, uh, I, I guess, myrrh, but it, there it's it's nutty i find it really nutty um, and i guess it's coming from that hazelnut uh, accord and it's that it almost feels like a nutty hazelnut chocolate spread without smelling chocolatey however there's a little bit of sweetness and uh i almost feel like it's a uh, just a little touch of tonka and i'm not crazy about tonka but in this dose in this small perceptible dose i like it and for some reason, I'm reminded of Tonka Imperial when I wear this. Not that it smells like Tonka Imperial, but it's got that 
that feeling, that subtleness of Tonka Imperial. And, and maybe it's got almost like the same kind of construction. The, the, the just the way it was built, you know, the scaffolding of, and, and the skeleton of Tonka Imperial feels like they've used the, uh, sort of the same uh, metric or the same system here. But uh, I do get just a little bit of sweetness in the bass, which is nice. So it's very meditative. Um, it's a very warm and, and enveloping scent, uh, slightly green, spicy. It's got a beautiful use of cardamom in here, which isn't overpowering. I think it's a very safe scent. Uh, when I first got it, I was like, mm, I wasn't sure about this. It felt a little bit too commercial and I, I was hoping for it to you know, fill in the gap of uh, going from commercial to a little bit more creative. But uh, like I said, the, the perfume has really opened up for me and, and it's changed quite, quite drastically since I've gotten it. And uh, I've come to now enjoy it much more than early on. So that's Santal Paurausa. Uh, I will say, you know, it did feel when I when, when I first got familiar with it, it did feel more um, Middle Eastern, which was a huge departure from the uh, Larte La Matie collection, which was, you know, early on it was all about vanilla, 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 vanilla. It was all vanilla, and then they kind of got weird a, a couple of years back, and they started going more florals. Uh, they really out Renoir, uh, Julius Tuberus, Embrums de Lang, Iris Toreffi, and then. Uh, when I had smelt this, I was like, okay, so they're changing their course once again. And uh, I almost thought it was their interpretation of um, a Middle Eastern perfume into a finer French thing. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's like this. It, it all depends on the way you perceive it. But it, it does feel a little bit out of place from the rest of the collection. So I'm really curious to see how they are going to navigate this going further. Uh, I don't know. Interesting. I do like it. Probably a little bit more than I should, but uh, it wears brilliantly. I love wearing it. Mm, it's just, uh, it's, it, I like wearing this more than I do Santal Royal. It's more my thing. It's just more airy, more subtle. It's not bold. It's not as punchy as Santal Royale. Um, and as much as they do share similar sandalwood um, notes and a little bit of that rosy, they're two very different perfumes. Very different. So there you go. If you're familiar with Santal Paurosa, let us know in the comments what you think. Do you see similarities to Santal Royale? Do you see similarities to Santal 33? Um, a little bit with that sandalwood very dry, harsh sandalwood. Um, yeah, always love seeing your faces. Always love reading your comments. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. And we will see you very soon.